Installing the Kohler Numi Toilet. This animation is a supplement to the printed installation instructions packed with the product. Consult the installation instructions and user's guide for in-depth detail and information. There are two ways to install the Numi Toilet. The preferred method of installation requires mounting blocks, which are used to secure the toilet. The second method uses the flange and T-bolts. This method requires that the side and back panels of the toilet be removed. Use the flange and T-bolt method when required by code. The flange and T-bolt mounting option is not covered in these installation instructions. Connect this product only to a properly grounded, grounding-type receptacle protected by a 12-volt, 15-amp, 60-hertz ground fault circuit interrupter. Do not remove the grounding pin or use a grounding adapter. This toilet weighs approximately 100 pounds, or 45 kilograms. Lift the toilet with two people. Do not install this toilet in buildings where the temperature will drop below 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 0 degrees Celsius. The design of the toilet makes it difficult to remove all water from the tank. Do not install any items behind the toilet if they will interfere with the seat cover when it is raised. This installation requires a standard 12-inch or 30.5 centimeter flange rough-in. The flange must be a minimum of 11 and 3 quarters inches or 29.8 centimeters from the finished wall, or the cover will strike the wall when it is opened. Carefully inspect the new toilet for damage before beginning the installation. Before beginning the installation, confirm all the parts are packed. In the parts bag, there are four 5 16 inch by two and one half inch lag bolts, four 5 16 inch lag bolt anchors, two mounting blocks, two number 10 by one and one half inch screws, two bushings, two caps. The docking box should contain the docking station, remote control, 15 foot or 4.5 meter power cord, optional FM antenna, and an auxiliary input cord. Also in the box should be a supply hose and clip and a back cover. The required tools and materials for this installation are Drill and drill bits appropriate for the floor material and type of installation. Assorted screwdrivers and an optional Phillips offset screwdriver. Scissors. Socket wrench or adjustable wrench. Flanged wax ring. Utility knife. Pencil. A wall plate. And a tape measure. There are three different roughing in options for this toilet. Route the water and electrical supplies through the wall. Route the electrical supplies and docking station through the wall and locate the water supply stop on the floor or through the floor. Follow all applicable codes and standards. The supplied power cord is 56 inches or 142 centimeters in length. Locate the outlet or junction box within 56 inches or 142 centimeters of the toilet. Install the docking station within reach of the supplied 15 foot or 4.5 meter cord. Install the docking station cord prior to installing the finished wall if possible. The toilet is supplied with two motion sensors. The front sensor automatically opens the toilet cover and seat when it senses motion. The adjustable sensor's maximum range is 51 and 1 half inches, or 130 centimeters. The side motion sensor opens the seat when the beam of light is broken. The sensor range is 8 inches, or 20.3 centimeters. Use a supply stop with a 1 half inch OD compression outlet. 
The water and electrical supplies can be routed through the wall or the floor. Locate the docking station cord, water, and electrical supplies at the correct location for the type of installation you have chosen. Position a wall plate on the power cord to the toilet end of the docking station cord. Install the docking station cord prior to installing the finished wall when possible. Route the docking station cord appropriately for your installation. For wall-mounted electrical and water supplies, the recommended locations are shown. Kohler recommends locating the supply stop alongside the toilet. When located as shown, the supply stop will be visible. If you want to conceal the supply stop, you can install it on the wall or floor behind the toilet to obscure it from view. However, this will make it difficult to remove the back panel of the toilet for servicing. If you do locate the supply stop on the wall or floor behind the toilet, make sure no part of it extends more than 3 inches or 7.6 centimeters from the finished wall. For installations with water and electrical supplies routed through the floor, drill a 1 and 1 quarter inch or 3.2 centimeter and a 1 and 1 half inch or 3.8 centimeter access hole at the recommended locations. When the recommended hole locations are used, the optional cover can be installed to cover the hose and electrical cord. Install optional internal speaker wires at this time if needed. Unpack the box containing the remote control components. Remove the remote control from the docking station and set it aside. Use a small screwdriver to remove the set screw. Tape the set screw to the docking station cover. Carefully remove the cover plate. Gently pry the sides of the cover plate out until they disconnect from the docking station. Disconnect the cover plate plug. If the power cord is routed through the wall, run the end through the back opening in the docking station. If the power cord is routed along the front of the wall, Route the power cord through the bottom opening. Position the docking station in the installation location. Mark the screw locations. Remove the docking station. Drill the appropriate sized mounting holes at the marks. The size of the holes will vary depending upon the finished wall material and the need for wall anchors. Install anchors if appropriate. Loosen each of the five screws at the wire connection ports. Run the power cord end into the docking station. Starting at the top, connect the orange wire to the first port. Connect the blue wire to the second port. Connect the red wire to the third port. Connect the white wire to the fourth port. Connect the black wire to the fifth port. Position the docking station in the installation location. Secure the docking station to the wall. Reinstall the cover. Remove the set screw from the docking station cover. Reinstall the set screw. Make sure you do not over tighten the screw. Remove the T bolts from the flange if they are present. Cut out the flange area on the template. Position the template over the flange. Make sure the template is centered over the flange using the center lines on the template. Orient the template parallel with the back wall. Secure the template to the floor with tape. Confirm the template is still properly positioned and centered over the flange. With two people, position the toilet on the template. Because of the unique design of this toilet, 
the width of the bottom edges varies. The following steps are required because of the variation. Align the front of the base with the markings on the template. Center the base so there is an equal amount of shaded area visible on the template on each side of the toilet. In the area under the screw holes on each side of the toilet, mark the location of the outside edge of the base on the template. The marked line should intersect the C and A or B lines. Position pieces of the box or other disposable protective material in front of the toilet. This material should protect both the toilet when it is tipped forward and the floor. A small amount of environmentally safe biodegradable antifreeze was added to the tank to prevent freezing during shipment. Some antifreeze may spill out when the toilet is tipped forward. Grasp the toilet in the opening behind the seat hinge and gently tilt it forward until it rests on its front surface. Measure the width of the base of the left side of the toilet directly under the screw hole. On the lines labeled A on the template, measure from the mark indicating the outside of the base inward and mark the width of the base. Using a straight edge, draw a line between the marks. Measure the width of the base on the right side of the toilet directly under the screw hole. On the lines labeled B on the template, measure from the mark indicating the outside of the base inward and mark the width of the base. Using a straight edge, draw a line between the marks. Directly under the screw holes, measure from the inside left base to the inside of the right base. On the template line marked C, Measure from the inside of the baseline on the left to the inside of the baseline on the right. Confirm this dimension is the same or within 1 16th inch or 2 millimeters of the actual distance. If C is greater than the actual distance, the toilet will not fit over the mounting blocks. Repeat the steps for lines A and B. The mounting blocks must be positioned within 1 16th inch or 2 millimeters of the base for proper installation integrity. Position a mounting block in the area indicated on the template. Confirm the outside edge of the mounting block is located within 1 16th inch or 2 millimeters of the line indicating the inside of the base. Insert a pencil into the holes in the mounting block and mark the hole locations on the template. Repeat with the second mounting block. Remove the mounting blocks. If the floor is tile or concrete, drill a 1 half inch or 1.3 centimeter hole using a masonry bit. Install the anchors. If the floor material is wood, Drill a 3 16th inch or 5 mm pilot hole. Remove the template. Align a mounting block with the corresponding holes. Secure the mounting block to the floor using the provided lag bolts. Repeat the procedure with a second mounting block. Position the wax ring on the flange. For best results, use a flanged wax ring such as the one shown. Slide the supply hose into the water inlet. Rotate the supply hose up if the water supply is located on the wall. Rotate the supply hose down if the water supply will be connected below the floor. Caution! Risk of property damage. It is critical that the supply hose be firmly secured by the clip. If the supply hose is not installed correctly, it will be displaced when under pressure, resulting in water damage.
Install the supplied clip onto the flanges of the supply hose and water inlet. Rotate the hose back and forth several times to confirm it moves easily. If there is binding or resistance, adjust the clip. It is not installed correctly. Stand in front of the toilet and grasp it by the back of the hinge. Slowly lower the toilet over the mounting blocks and flange, making sure the toilet stays correctly aligned as it is lowered. Confirm the toilet is located correctly. If the toilet needs to be moved, install a new wax ring to the flange. Push down on the toilet to set the wax ring. Connect the water supply hose to the supply stop. If the hose twists or binds, adjust it as needed. Confirm the water supply hose to the water inlet connection is still secure and the flanges are still correctly positioned in the clip. Connect the docking station power cord. Connect the optional FM antenna if desired. If external speakers are installed, connect the external speakers. Place the remote control on the docking station. If the remote control is removed from the docking station before it has charged for 30 minutes, the remote control will not function correctly. Turn on the water supply. Connect the power. When there is power to the toilet, it will enter startup mode, which takes approximately one minute. Do not use the toilet while it is in startup mode. After the startup mode is complete, flush the toilet using the manual controls or the remote control if it is on the docking station. Allow time for the toilet to refill. Check for leaks around the supply hose, supply stop, and the base of the toilet. Insert a bushing into the hole in the base on each side of the toilet. Insert one of the supplied screws into one of the holes. Partially thread the screw into the mounting block. Insert the other screw into the second mounting block through the hole on the other side of the toilet. Tighten the screws evenly until they are both all the way into the mounting blocks. Install the caps to each screw. If the remote control has not charged for at least 30 minutes, perform these steps with the remote control connected to the docking station. English is the default display language. If another language is desired, select Settings. Select System Settings. Select Languages. If the language you desire does not appear on the screen, move the scroll bar down to see additional language options. Select the radio button for your desired language. The screen text will immediately change to the selected language. Select Home. Set the date. Select Settings. Select System Settings. Select Set Date. Use the up and down indicators to adjust the day, month, and year. Select the desired radio button for the date format. Select Home. Set the time. Select Settings. Select System Settings. Select Set Time. Select the radio button for the 12-hour or 24-hour option. Use the up and down indicators to adjust the hour and minute. Select the radio button for the AM or PM option. Select Home. 
If the toilet does not respond to the remote, connect the remote control. Select Settings. Select Maintenance. Select Learn Remote. Follow the instructions on the remote control screen. When complete, select Yes. Select Home. To complete the installation process, select the Flush Eco option on the remote control. Confirm the toilet flushes. Remove the protective film from the toilet and remote control. Apply caulk around the base of the toilet, following the caulk manufacturer's instructions. Do not caulk the area in front of the heated feet outlet or the side motion sensor.